what is data-driven attribution and why you should use it in your Google Ads campaigns. In this channel, we talk a lot about e-commerce and uh, Google Ads more specifically for e-commerce brands. We work at Leadways with a variety of brands doing anywhere between 500,000 and 50 million a year. And this is a question, this is something, this is an area where we are working a lot on, we are doing a lot of research on attribution. We are following up on all the trends. We are learning as much as we can about attribution and the changes that have been going on with Google Ads. Now, as you can see here, Google has mutual attribution models. Uh, last click, time decay, linear, position based, first click and data driven, and it's going through a shift. Time decay, linear, position based, and first click are going away. The only two models you're going to have moving forward are last click and data driven. Now, I have a video explaining each of these um, attribution models and the difference between all of them. Uh, but in some, what's going to happen is data driven is coming to uh, to, to, to take their place. Basically, data-driven is something, is an attribution model that has the capability of being more accurate for your store, for your brand, for your business, than all of these other methods because it relies on AI and it's tailored to your brand, as I'm going to explain further down the line. So it's going to be uh, basically, it's going to replace all of these other. Now, how does it work? Why is it so special? Why is Google giving so much emphasis to this attribution model specifically? As you can see here, Google will use historical data from your conversions to determine a weight to each touch point dynamically. In other words, it uses account data to calculate the contribution of each interaction. And just to explain a little bit better what this means and what these attribution methods, uh, attribution models do, uh, basically when someone uh, buys something on your website, Google have to see which campaigns, which ads, which keywords made them buy. And that's the big discussion here. How, how do we attribute the sale to one specific campaign if multiple campaigns play the role in bringing this person to my website, if multiple campaigns uh, play the role in making the person have the buying decision. Now, that's the million dollar question here and Google is trying to figure out the best way to explain the customer journey in numbers with these attribution models. Now, last click, time decay, linear, position based and first click were templates were uh, frameworks, um, basically standardized attribution models, which told you a story. The problem is no one of these attribution model is perfect for your specific um, customer journey. Your customers, they are not on a linear uh, uh, mindset when they, they are going to buy your products from you after seeing multiple ads. They are also not uh, only thinking about the first ad that you show them on a first click attribution model and most likely they are not buying because of the last ad that you show them. Again, make sure to watch the video about uh, the difference between attribution models if you are lost uh, with this. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I was also kind of lost with all these attribution models. I had to do my own research to figure out exactly which one meant and uh, basically uh, how to differentiate all of them, okay? So what happens now is Google will be attributing different weights. So to put that into a practical example, I sell shoes, I have a shoe store or I have a supplement brand. Okay, let's do a supplement brand. I have a supplement brand and this supplement brand, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running some ads on Google. I have search ads, I have shopping ads, and I have some very, very nice YouTube videos going uh, 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 being shown to new audiences. The goal for these videos is to explain about my product, uh, tell tell uh, potential customers about all the, the, the ingredients, all the nuances my product has, and these ads are being pushed to a completely cold audience. Now, I believe personally that this video has a big impact into the purchase into making someone go to my website. And by that's what that's what's bringing a lot of people to my website. These people are not converting right away, most of them. But then three weeks later, they come back through another campaign, for example, a shopping campaign or a performance max campaign or a search campaign, and they buy from me. Now, I believe that this person had some of their buying decision being determined by those uh, code ads that I launched. So, 
I need an attribution model that tells me that story. This would be, for example, a first click attribution model where uh, Google would attribute this conversion when they buy on my website, they would attribute that conversion to my first YouTube video that they saw. Now, problem is not everyone that saw that video decided to buy right away. I have other ads throughout weeks and months that are going to also be persuading them. So it's not fair to give all the attribution to that first conversion. Now, with the data-driven attribution, it looks, and this is from Google, it looks at all the ways that people interact with your campaigns on their way to conversion, assigning conversion credit along the entire conversion path. So that's where it becomes interesting. Google is trying to see how much of an impact my YouTube campaign had, my search campaign had, my shopping campaign had, and then when it comes to seeing the results on the dashboard, um, it's going to give me different percentages. So if someone bought something for $100, but if 30% of the reason why they bought it came from, uh, was uh, due to YouTube, then they're going to give 30% of the conversion value and the attribution to the YouTube campaign. Now, I'm going to get to this when I get to the takeaway section, but this is a very, very interesting attribution model if my goal is to scale my brand. Again, let's talk about that in a second. Now, to give you an example of what that looks like in real life, we will have now partial conversions. What that means is that, as I mentioned before, my YouTube campaign is going to have part of the responsibility, my search campaign part of the responsibility, and my shopping campaign part of the responsibility. So what you're going to see on your dashboard is, for example, Performance Max uh, had 53.7% uh, conversions. You, um, in the last click attribution model, you'd be like, okay, but how is that possible if someone bought, they bought 0.7% of a shoe? That doesn't make sense. Now, it does make sense because now you know that the Performance Max brought 56.7% of your conversions and your search campaign brought 33.3% of conversions. If you sum it up, you're going to come to a full amount. Now, but all that is happening here is that Google understands that some of these conversions are a shared effort between the Pmax and the search campaign, which basically means that uh, if you're having good results on your Pmax campaign, you're going to see this result. If, if the performance max campaign is helping you bring new customers, even if they are converting afterwards on the search campaign, uh, this campaign is still getting credit. And with that, you can put more ad spend towards this campaign, which is at the end of the day, a smart move for you. Other example here would be keywords. The keyword one brought 56.7% conversions. Keyword two brought 33.3% of conversions. Both played a role into making someone purchase. Now let's talk about key takeaways here. Data-driven attribution is more growth focus as it gives credit to campaigns that generated interactions earlier down the line of the conversion process, which also means top of funnel. Differently from the last click model, which will attribute everything to the last touch point, um, for example, a bottle of funnel campaigns such as the branding campaign. So back to my example. If I have this big effort, this, I spent millions on this fancy studio and this fancy production for my supplements, for a lot of videos about it, a lot of production influencers, this, that, actors, and I have all these campaigns running, these cold campaign runs that are giving a customers a first look into my brand and then they come to my website. Three weeks later, they search for the name of my brand and purchase via the branding campaign. On a last click attribution model, this branding campaign is going to get all the attribution while on, uh, on, 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 on data-driven, uh, Google is going to assign more of that weight to these initial campaigns. So what this means for brands that are looking to grow, you'll now be able to see which top of funnel, which acquisition campaigns are being responsible for bringing customers. Therefore, you put more, naturally, you put more budget towards these campaigns. And uh, if you look at your account ratio after six month, months using these attribution models, you're going to have a much more customer acquisition 
focused approach to your overall Google Ads strategy, which is exactly what we do at the agency. We work with these brands with the sole focus, with the main focus of bringing them new customers as much as we can from non-branded campaigns, from cold campaigns and data-driven is helping us accomplish that. Data-driven is helping us get to that point more clearly and uh, basically giving more insights on how we can bring new customers to these brands through more top of funnel efforts, which is fantastic, which is exactly what brands want. We don't wanna be just recycling uh, conversions. Another relevant takeaway here is that the data-driven attribution model only accounts for touch points from coming from Google Ads campaigns. It's not going to account for Facebook ads, uh, ad views, not going to account for Bing ads, search ads, not going to account for other marketing efforts, billboards on the street perhaps. Which means we still have a lot to work on for multi-channel attribution, which is the big, which is the billion dollar question about attribution, that's why we are seeing all these startups uh, being born to deal with uh, attribution. So while you can't see what happens on a big scale between all of your different marketing efforts for your brand, you can see at least within the Google Ads network, which means the different campaigns you have on, on, on Google, YouTube, search, shopping, performance max, etc., how each campaign contributes to your overall Google Ads result, your overall uh, revenue generated from Google Ads. We are still a bit far from figuring out attribution for good, for having a perfect attribution model, but it's interesting that Google it's, is moving towards this direction with data-driven attribution. So that's it for this video. I hope I clarified what this model means and why it's so interesting and why I believe you should be using it. Um, we have another video, as I mentioned, going through and explaining each of the attribution models. I strongly recommend you watching this. And um, this is pretty much it for this video. I hope I see you again next week for another Google Ads video, more specifically for e-commerce brands selling CPG products, subscription products, or any kind of product, really. We bring a lot of valuable insights into about Google Ads. So if you liked it, make sure to subscribe and to leave a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to answer. And with that said, I will see you next week.